let us see about recess isoimmunization which is also called as RH isoimmunization. Firstly, what is RH isoimmunization? It is a condition in which a RH negative women is exposed to RH positive blood cells leading to the formation of RH antibodies. This is what is called as RH isoimmunization. Most commonly this occurs due to the feto maternal hemorrhage. When the child that is the fetus is RH positive and the mother is RH negative. So, the RH negative mother when she is exposed to an RH positive fetus and if she is exposed to the fetal red cells this leads to RH isoimmunization and this occurs more commonly due to feto maternal hemorrhage. Coming to the incidence Almost about 5 percent of the Indian women are RH negative and now let us see about the factors influencing the RH isoimmunization. Firstly we have the duration of pregnancy. So, most commonly this RH isoimmunization occurs at the time of delivery. So, most commonly this occurs during the time of delivery. This is why the first RH positive fetus is not affected. Only the subsequent pregnancies with RH negative fetuses are affected. The other factor includes spontaneous abortion this is also associated with transplacental hemorrhage. So, if the abortion occurs in the first trimester the risk of RH isoimmunization is only 3 percent whereas if it occurs in second trimester the risk is 12 percent and there is maximum risk in third trimester which is around 46 percent. Next the next factor is the amount of transplacental hemorrhage. The amount of blood transferred from the fetus to the mother also influences the RH isoimmunization. So, normally the, this can vary from 0.1 ml to about 5 ml. On an average the maximum transfer of blood could be only about 15 ml. Maximum possible blood transfer is 15 ml between the fetus and the mother and the risk of RH isoimmunization is 3 percent with 0.1 ml of fetal RBCs and then 25 percent with 0.25 to 1 ml and the risk increases to 65 percent with more than 5 ml of fetal maternal hemorrhage. And the next factor is we will see about the postpartum prophylaxis. A 
as soon as the child is born if the child which is born is rh negative then no anti d is administered to the mother whereas if the child turns out to be rh positive then it is necessary to administer anti d to the mother an anti g is administered in a dose of 300 micrograms within 48 to 72 hours of delivery so this is the postpartum prophylaxis next let's see the factors that precipitate the fetal maternal hemorrhage during pregnancy so what all factors precipitate the fetal maternal hemorrhage during pregnancy first the complications of pregnancy like abortions like spontaneous and threatened abortions and then the death of fetus intrauterine death then abruptio placenta and ectopic pregnancy next coming to the invasive investigations like chorionic villus sampling amniocentesis and chordocentesis next certain obstetric procedures like external cephalic version and postnatally the manual removal of placenta can also precipitate the fetal maternal hemorrhage so we've already seen the postpartum prophylaxis for rh isoimmunization coming to the antepartum prophylaxis all the rh negative women who get pregnant are given a dose of anti d 300 micrograms at week 28 and a repeat dose is given at week 40 if the woman has not delivered until 40th week so this is antepartum prophylaxis next let's see about the identification of rh negative pregnancy or identification of rh isoimmunization the first major thing is blood grouping and typing which is done in all antenatal checkups this is the basic investigation to detect an rh negative mother and thereby from that we can identify the rh isoimmunization if there is present or not so this is performed routinely if the mother turns out to be rh negative then the father's blood group is checked if the mother is rh negative father's blood group is checked if the father also turns out to be rh negative then there's no further investigation required and the pregnancy is treated as a normal pregnancy 
if the father is rh positive then indirect coombs test is performed from the mother's blood to detect the anti d antibodies in the maternal serum and if the indirect coombs test turns out to be normal then it is repeated once every trimester if the indirect coombs test turns out to be positive then the pers- the women that is the mother is diagnosed to be rh immunized pregnancy and she is referred to a higher center that is like tertiary care hospitals this is how we identified an rh negative pregnancy or rh immunized pregnancy next coming to the principles of management of rh immunized pregnancy first we perform rh antibody assay this is done by indirect coombs test in which the significant titer is more than 1 is to 16 or 1 is to 32 or titer above 1 is to 16 or 1 is to 32 is considered as significant titer and indirect coombs test is positive second is the ultrasound evaluation of the fetus here we see the early and the late findings of fetal anemia the early findings include the hepatosplenomegaly polyhydramnios large placenta and increased diameter of umbilical vein whereas the late findings include scalp edema pleural and pericardial effusion next we also perform the middle cerebral artery doppler if the peak velocity is 1.5 times the median value it is considered to be that the fetal anemia is present this is middle cerebral artery doppler next coming to amniocentesis and examination of amniotic fluid so in amniotic fluid the amount of bilirubin present in the amniotic fluid determines the degree of hemolysis and thereby determines the severity of the anemia and the findings are plotted in a modified lilies graph so this is amniocentesis and examination of amniotic fluid 